Welcome to our Good Friday service. Uh, we have pre-recorded this service so that you and your families are able to participate in it in a time and space that, that's comfortable for all of you. And I pray that this time that we spend together would be a blessing to you as we remember and honor uh, the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, it is difficult for us to comprehend the magnitude of this moment, the immensity of what you have done for us. It is complicated. It's painful. It's hard to dwell in this space and to remember what you went through, and yet we come now to be in your presence, to share in this moment of agony, to remember that sacrifice, and to remember the grace and the love that was poured out to humanity through it. We are so profoundly thankful for all that Christ has done. And we pray that this evening that we may in some way bring honor to him, that we may in some way celebrate rightly the gift that he has offered us. We thank you so much that you have invited us into this place. We thank you so much that you have invited us into that kingdom which has been prepared, which is now, even now, coming upon this earth. We thank you so much that Christ has given all for us. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Our first reading this evening comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 1 through 5. And Will Cass has, uh, it will be offering that reading for us via video. Good evening. This Good Friday reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 1 through 5. The people reply, who would have believed what we now report? Who could have seen the Lord's hand in this? It was the will of the Lord that his servant grow like a plant, taking root in dry ground. He had no dignity or beauty to make us take notice of him. There was nothing attractive about him, nothing that would draw us to him. We despised him and we rejected him. He endured suffering and pain. No one would even look at him. We ignored him as if he were nothing. But he endured the suffering that should have been ours, the pain that we should have borne. All the while, we thought that his suffering was punishment sent by God. But because of our sins, he was wounded, beaten because of the evil we did. We are healed by the punishment he suffered, made whole by the blows he received. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Friends, we invite you to join us as we sing some songs of praise in, in celebration and honor of our God on this Good Friday. Uh, we invite you to sing with us. Stand if, if you're able in body or spirit and uh, sing Come As You Are. Again, the words are in your Easter program.
grace, there's rest for the weary, rest that endures, and earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. So lay down your burden.
This time in our service, we're going to be hearing together the seven last words of Jesus. And in between each one of these readings, there's going to be a few moments to pause. Uh, We've been celebrating the season of Lent as a a season of Salah. I I want to encourage you, uh, after you've heard uh, one of the the last words of Jesus, to take just a few moments to reflect on that. Uh, you can even, this is pre-recorded, you can hit the pause button and we're going to give you a few seconds, but if you need longer, take as long as you need to reflect on these words, these profound words that Jesus shared with us. And for each one of these, there is going to be a response sung, uh, and you'll see the video sung by Shona Tucker. Our first scripture is Luke 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. second reading, second last saying of Jesus is Luke 23, verse 43. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise.
Our third of the last sayings of Jesus is from John chapter 19, verses 26 through 27. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple who he loved standing beside her, he said to his, mo his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. of the last sayings of Jesus from Mark chapter 15, verse 34. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? fifth of the final words of Jesus from John chapter 19 verse 28 after this when Jesus knew 
that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill scripture, I am thirsty. Our sixth of the last words of Jesus from John 19, verse 30. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Our final of the last words of Jesus from Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 
And having said this, he breathed his last. Some of you might know a Baptist preacher named Tony Campolo. He's known for having a take-it-or-leave-it style of preaching, which has at times given him a reputation for being a a bit abrasive, even controversial. Personally, I kind of like him. There's there's one sermon of his in particular, not not one of the controversial ones, but but a sermon that he's well known for. And, And about 15 years ago, when I was serving another United Methodist Church, I actually had the opportunity to invite him to come and and preach in our congregation. And I was fortunate enough to hear this sermon in person. It's called, It's Friday, but Sunday is coming. It's Friday, but Sunday is coming. It's based on this notion that while right now is a good Friday moment, and the world may not be what we want it to be, right now. And, and, and right now there is brokenness and there is heartache and there is pain. And, and right now the world is suffering through a, a pandemic. And, and right now there are political and religious divides which tear at our communities. Right now we might be living in the dark shadow of a Good Friday moment when the world is far from what it should be. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Isn't that a great message? I appreciate that reminder, and yet, I hesitate to move too quickly from Friday to Sunday. Because sometimes in our haste to move past the discomfort of this moment, it can be easy to forget about how important Friday is. Sometimes it's simpler and and less painful to not dwell in the darkness of this moment, to to not soak in the depths of the difficulty of Good Friday. And I'm not sure that we can or should so easily dismiss the sacrifice which was made for us on that Good Friday. I think that it's not a bad thing for us to dwell for a time in the discomfort Or another way of putting it might be, yes, Sunday is coming, but we need Friday to get there. In college, we had to prepare sermons for our preaching class, and and there was one unit where we had to pick different holy days to preach on for the class. And of course, there was was always a scramble for Easter and for Christmas, and and, and even for days like Pentecost and, and Epiphany. But there were two days in particular that, that nobody really uh, competed for, and that was Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. But I remember distinctly a friend of mine who preached his Good Friday sermon. Now, I, I know it was probably on a Wednesday afternoon in the middle of the fall, but it was a Good Friday sermon. And, he, and, and during the sermon, he showed us the cross that he was wearing. And, and then he talked about his grandparents who were Catholic, and talked about how they wore crucifixes. Now, if you're, if you're not aware of what the difference is, uh, a, a crucifix is a cross that has the image of the crucified Christ on it. And when he, when he talked about his grandparents wearing the crucifix, he noted that he had heard Protestant Christians criticize the wearing of crucifixes, saying, don't they know that Jesus isn't on the cross anymore? And then he said to us, what's worse, to forget the Jesus who is no longer on the cross or to forget that he was ever there in the first place? 
Yes, Sunday is coming, but today is Good Friday. And we need to remember today that Jesus went to that cross And we need to remember the sacrifice that was made for us. We need to dwell in this difficult moment. And we need to allow the weight of it all to rest on us. Because we cannot afford to forget the price that has been paid. We cannot afford to ignore what Christ has done for us. A few moments ago, we heard seven verses which are traditionally known as the seven final words of Jesus. And, and I do hope that you, that you have taken or you will take time to really pause and reflect on each one of those words. Each one is a window into Christ's heart in, in the final moments before he pays that ultimate price. They are phrases full of selflessness and hope and, and agony and humanity and divinity. They are raw words, and yet somehow they are healing words. I want to focus on just the last one that we heard this evening from Luke 23, 46. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It is impossible for us to imagine the weight of what the world, what the weight of the world feels like. But that is precisely what Christ carried in that moment. And and yet he did so with a sense that he was not alone. His whole life was lived with an awareness of God's abiding presence. And I think that we should all attain to the same from the angels being present at the moment of his birth to a voice from heaven at his baptism, even to this moment in his life, God had journeyed down every road with him and God was not going to abandon him now. In this, the darkest period of his life, the dark, darkest that he had experienced yet, as the full reality of his humanity is displayed on that cruel Roman cross, Nobody could have blamed him for doubting. I mean, who who among us could have endured not just the physical agony, but the emotional pain of the betrayal and, and the rejection that he suffered at the hands of the very people that he came to rescue? He he would die on a cross so that the people who put him there would have a chance to know about the love of God. Think about that for a moment. And in that moment, as he prepares to exhale one final breath, the, the, the Greek word is pneuma. And as in Hebrew, the word for breath, pneuma, is the same as the word for spirit. And so as he prepares to offer his fullest measure, to pour himself out completely, to empty himself, himself to, to exhale one final breath and to give up his spirit, so that others might learn to breathe, so that others may be filled with a new spirit. As he does this, he entrusts whatever life he has left, whatever future there might possibly be, he entrusts it into the hands of God who has never left him and who never will. Into your hands... I commend my spirit. Or another way of saying this might be, my final breath, O God, is to you. I wonder how many of you remember the song, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. I remember singing it in elementary school. It's an old African-American spiritual, and like so many of the spirituals, it was meant to offer a word of hope a glimmer of light amidst the harshest realities of life. It's a reminder that though things may seem to be at their worst, and and though we may not be able to see a way beyond our present suffering, that no matter how dark the darkness, how hopeless the circumstances, how heavy the moment, we are not alone and we never will be. 
He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Sunday is not far away, but today is Friday. So let us trust God in this moment, even in the midst of the struggle, that we may, like Christ, commit our lives into God's safe and loving hands. Amen. Behold, the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. O come, let us worship him. We'll sing together now our song of praise, The Wonderful Cross.
Friends, let us now join together in prayer with one another. I invite you to spend a few moments in silent meditation. Just be in the presence of God. Place yourself at the foot of the cross. I, I encouraged you and I, and I placed some resources in our Easter program for how to create a worshipful space in your own home. And, and I'd encourage you now to, to go and to be in the presence of the cross as we pray. Perhaps even bow before it. Bow before the cross of Christ. Let us pray. Jesus, our Savior, you have given everything for us, and there are not words enough to express our gratitude. And there are not words enough to express the sorrow, the deep sorrow, the grief, when we consider what you had to endure to save us, when we consider the price that you had to pay to redeem us. And, and it can feel at times like too steep a price. But you didn't believe it was. You looked upon us and you loved us so deeply. You saw us as the children of God despite our failures, despite our frailty, despite the sin within us. You saw beyond it and you just knew that we were God's beloved and you would stop at nothing to make a way for us to be home again. God, for all the hurting in this world, for all the brokenness around us, we pray that it may be touched by your healing grace, that, that the love that you poured out on that cross on that first Good Friday may cover this world May it cover the hurting. May it cover the sadness and the sorrow. And even as if we join you in this moment, and even as we feel the burden of this grief, we recognize that this is not the end of the story. And we pray, God, that you give us the strength and the faith to journey on beyond the cross, to new life. And we pray this in your precious name. Amen. I offer you a closing blessing, and we'll have a few moments of silence as you reflect on all that the cross and the Christ who went to that cross means to you. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you now and forever. Amen.